in theaters now in a multitude of formats is the much anticipated by some people, I'm sure, uh, long awaited, again, I'm sure by some people, sequel to James Cameron's blockbuster Avatar from a fistful of years ago. This is Avatar The Way of Water. This is the film that the industry and certainly the studio hopes is going to be the gigantic hit of the holiday season. As I record this, uh, this is the film has been out and released for two days, so it's too soon for me to say how, it, how it's been doing financially. I just know that every theater around me, and these are big theaters, has show times from like 8 a.m. until, okay, this movie's three hours and 15 minutes, just keep that in mind. Show times on most of their screens starting at 8 a.m. and the last show of the night on one of the screens locally is 12.30 a.m. That's a half hour after midnight. You sit down for that, which was for me, 30 minutes of commercials, okay, now that's 1 a.m., and your movie is gonna run until about 4.15 in the morning. So that to me is insane. I, I, that's crazy. I feel bad for the, for the workers. I feel great for anybody for whom that is the most convenient showtime. Uh, you're not going to be fighting for seats, I don't think. Anyway, the movie itself. So uh, I'm just going to give you my take on this whole thing, which is all I really can do. I saw Avatar when it came out. I wasn't really excited to see Avatar when it came out, but it was so hyped for its use of 3D and its use of CGI and all that. And I just was curious. I wanted to, I wanted to be an informed, uh, member of the public. And I think I was doing the show at the time, so I you know, wanted to be able to talk about it on TV. I didn't think Avatar was very good. It was very, very, I thought Avatar was kind of bad. Visually, it was excellent. What it did with technology was excellent. Uh, the 3D was very good, but story and dialogue wise, I thought Avatar was, was pretty weak. So, and at the time I remember James Cameron saying he was planning like three more and I thought, wow, really? but it was a very, very successful film. So nothing ensures a sequel so much as a first installment doing very, very well. So it just took a very long time to happen. So it's been hyped and it's been pumped for very months and months now. And I've seen this trailer so many times and every one of the trailers for this movie, Avatar, The Way of Water, it, they, it just did not grab me. I was completely indifferent. And honestly, the only reason I bought a ticket to go see this was because a friend of mine was trying to buy a ticket through the AMC app and he said it was crashing and it wasn't letting him use A-list and all this stuff. And I was like, well, let's see if I can get a ticket. And I did immediately. So I was like, eh, I guess I'll go now. Uh, I, was, I mean, I was going to see it anyway. I wanted to see what kind of technological advances had happened in the last. Honestly, I don't know. You probably know better than me when the first one came out. Time is a blur for me now. So it's been at least a decade, right? Maybe two? I don't know. Uh, I, I just thought more Avatar movies so long after the fact was just silly and especially wanting to do three was just crazy. So what I did was I, because I've, I've said before, this is not a paid commercial announcement. I have AMC Stubbs A-List, which is a monthly subscription which lets you pay X amount of dollars a month and you can see three movies a week and there's no restrictions. So since there's no restrictions and since I feel like Give me every enhancement you can to maybe like a film more. I saw Avatar The Way of Water in IMAX 3D, because why not? And I know James Cameron makes his films for that purpose. Unlike a lot of filmmakers where their films, you know, become transformed into 3D and IMAX and all that stuff, he does it with that in mind. And apparently this film also has some high frame rate. Frame uh, Films are generally 24 frames a second, videos 30 frames a second. I guess there's some sequences that were done in 48 frames a second to make the imagery a little sharper and feel more realistic, but only certain theaters can do that, and I believe most can't. So uh, I don't believe I saw any of... Didn't, didn't look any different to me. So I went and saw uh, Avatar The Way of Water going in with zero or negative... You know, I didn't go in with a beef, but I just went in thinking... I'm probably not going to be too into this movie. And it was okay. You know, it wasn't bad. The uh, They didn't, for better or worse, I respect a sequel that doesn't spend a lot of time getting the audience up to speed as to what happened in the first movie. This does sort of in passing in conversation, but not too much. This is a sequel that takes place several years after the first film, and it, uh, it basically involves the... Uh, See, I don't, okay, here's the deal. I don't remember the original Avatar very much. Like I said, I saw it, I didn't think it was very good. I kind of put it out of my mind and moved on with life. So the fact that this film doesn't do a heavy recap 
made me work a little harder to remember who everybody was and what their relationships were and what went on in the first film. It tells you enough to get by. No film or very few Hollywood blockbusters are going to be made that will exclude any audience member from enjoying it. So a lot of times when people are like, who's that guy? What's going on? What's, what's he gonna do? What did he say? I'm always, I'm like, it's gonna get explained. Don't worry about it. TC, my former TV co-host, you'd say that all the time. Movies exist to answer your questions. Uh, so basically you have the hero from the original film who is now a Navi, one of the uh, indigenous peoples or a hybrid indigenous people to this planet, one of the blue people on this planet. Um, all the bad guys, the, the sky people, they call them all the, you know, American slash Earth people who are there trying to mine the planet for unobtainium, which is one of the dumbest names for an element ever. Uh, they have all left and everything's groovy and he now has uh, children with uh, the woman who was his enemy, but now have ultimately his love. And they're, re they're raising a lovely little brood of blue people on the planet and they're learning to fish and hunt and, and do what the, what the people do. And suddenly there are some lights in the sky not going to tell you the whole story. Suddenly there are some lights in the sky and it seems that the sky people, the earth people are coming back. Now, as the film progresses, we learn what the new thing they're looking for is in this film. It's something else that they're coming and trying to, you know, sap the natural racehorses of the planet for. And it becomes uh, also, and I'm not going to give this part away. This is kind of central to the film, but I'm not going to do it. Somebody has returned with a grudge who's looking to, to kill and capture our hero from the first film. So, our hero from the first film and his family need to basically go on the run and they go to uh, an ocean-based community on this planet, thus the whole way of water. So they are, um, forgive me for saying it, it's kind of a fish out of water thing where uh, the hero and his family need to learn to fish, uh, fish better, uh, ride the sea creatures underwater and, and live the, the life of, of a semi-aquatic race. And with, with the bad guys, you know, on the way and on the hunt. So that's the basic story of the film. It is three hours and 15 minutes long, just know that. It never felt sluggish or boring to me. It never felt too long. Um, when, it, when it wrapped up, I was like, okay, that was great. It, 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 some, movies are, some movies are 90 minutes and they feel like they're three hours long. This was 3.15 and it, it felt like 90 or 100 minutes or two hours. Um, so the effects. Probably the best CGI that I've seen in that mouth movement. So it's all, as far as I know, I didn't dig into how this film was made. As far as I know, it was all motion capture on actual actors and you hear the actor's voices, but what you're seeing is a computer rendered being. The lips, the lips almost never match in real life, not in real life. In most movies, lip movement is what just lo loses me. A couple things with CGI, the lips never match and it never really, if it's a CGI creature or person in the real world, it never looks like it has the weight of a physical being has in the world. It always looks a little floaty, like it doesn't really belong in, in reality. In this film, and again, I don't know how much was green screen completely created in the computer, and I don't know how much was actually shot out in the ocean somewhere, which is a compliment to this film. The beings look real for the most part, and they look like they're really there. That's the big thing too. It, it, it looks like they're there when they're interacting with human beings, it looks natural. You don't, you stop thinking about that which is key. You shouldn't be thinking that you're seeing special effects. You should be thinking that you're seeing these people in this place and this thing is happening. Um, the 3D, it's very hard for me to say because it might be me, it might be my, my peepers, I don't know what it is, but most of the time I see a 3D movie and the trailers look like they're really, they really crank the Z axis in a trailer sometimes to really sell that they're in 3D, sometimes to a point where your eyes almost cross. Uh, the trailers were in 3D, you know, the titles always look like they're not on the same plane as the imagery, but a lot of the time while I was watching this and most 3D movies, after a while I'm wondering if it is even in 3D. Like I'll drop my glasses down and if you see the double image, you know, okay, well that should be in 3D. If you see a single image, you're like, okay, there's no depth going on here. Um, a lot of movies have no depth whether they're in 3D or not. And this movie I kept forgetting it was in 3D. So I don't know, I think the 3D is a nice enhancement if you're uptight about paying the extra for 3D, I don't know that there was really a lot in this movie that really pushed the 3D envelope very much or really made me feel like, wow, I'm getting a 3D movie at times. Like the, the text when there was subtitles for the language of the people, that felt like it was 3D, but a lot of the time it kind of didn't. Um, thematically, more or less the same as the first movie. 
uh, you know, conquerors or exploiters or what do they call them in Black Panther? Um, colonialists or whatever coming in and pushing out indigenous peoples so that they can, you know, basically do a scorched earth policy on getting the resources they want to make money. That is the theme here again. Uh, you know, acceptance of the other is a theme here between the humans and the Navi people, between the Navi people and the sea people. Forgive me if I don't remember the names of all these things. And, you know, it's it, it's, a, it's a worthy topic. It's a worthy topic that, that sadly is not a topic that only is relevant in the past. Um, acting wise, uh, performances were great. I mean, the performances are mostly computer generated creatures. You're seeing this, you don't see a lot of human beings. You see Edie Falco as the general in charge of the, uh, uh I keep wanting to say American cause that's pretty much what it is, but the earth people invasion, you have, uh, I can't think of his name. He was the guy who was in don't breathe. And he was the bad guy in the first one. You see him briefly via video screen. And that was something that was cool. There are a lot of these like ultra thin video screens that you see like floating in the air in this film or they're, they're, they're holographic displays that come up. Each one of those screens is 3D as well. So if you see several of those, it's 3D. If somebody moves around one to the back, it's still 3D. I've never seen that in a movie before and that was kind of cool. Um, acting, again, the actors, you have, uh, I believe it's Sam Worthington, sorry if I'm wrong, uh, the actor from the first movie. You have, apparently Kate Winslet did a voice. You have um, Sigourney Weaver appears very, very briefly in the film and she, she voices a character. There's the concept in this film of people's consciousness being put into like, and maybe this was the deal with the original, the titular avatars. People's consciousness being put into a Navi body or, or Navi bodies being grown with the consciousness of people. Again, I haven't seen the original. I know they did re-release the original relatively recently in theaters, and that was probably the smartest thing to do was to go get see that as catch-up. I would recommend watching Avatar again before you see the sequel just because I think it'll mean a lot more. I went in and I had a good time. I thought it was, it was good. Uh, I still, it certainly angles, it sets you up for another sequel. The movie doesn't, the conflict in the movie doesn't really end at the end of this. So there's a clearly hoping to be one more, maybe a couple more. I don't know how you would get more than one more out of this story because this film as it is, is kind of in some ways a retread of the first film in broad strokes about what the, the antagonist and the protagonist want other than there's a little bit more interpersonal stuff going on in this, but uh, well made. I mean, James Cameron knows how to make a good movie. I might not love them all, but he knows how to make a good movie. So uh, I'm sure this will be playing for quite a while. That's kind of how it works now. I don't know if, if you're aware, but most theaters, in order to get a film, they have to commit to keeping it for X number of weeks on the same screen. So you're gonna see this in theaters probably for at least through January. And uh, maybe you'll like it. You can't say you're not getting your money's worth. If you're paying the same amount that you're paying for an 80 minute movie and you're getting a three hour and 15 minute movie, that's entertainment. So in theaters now and, and now and forever, uh, in theaters is Avatar, The Way of Water.